What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Name Toys video. Today, we are going to be fantasy booking the WWE Royal Rumble pay-per-view. Now, I do believe this is the first time we're fantasy booking a pay-per-view in a long time. It's been a while since we've fantasy booked a pay-per-view, but it's returning. It's mainly because the office was a mess. It was a bunch of chaotic stuff going on, but we are finally back fantasy booking a pay-per-view. And it's one of my all-time favorite pay-per-views. I love everything about the Royal Rumble. Very nostalgic for me, obviously. Just have always been obsessed with the Royal Rumble and everything that ensues with it. So, this should be very fun, man. We only have four matches on the card at time of recording this and some things may be subject to change because I'm filming this prior to Friday Night Smackdown and I'm recording this on Wednesday night because I'm actually going to the Royal Rumble in Tampa. So with that being said man let's dive into the card but before we dive into the card I do want to lay some ground rules. So the whole rule of it is basically WWE handing me over the creative keys of freedom and I can book whatever I want at this show and moving forward like a couple months into the future or what have you. I guess the Wrestlemania season you could say but I try to keep it as realistic as possible. Not everything is 100%, but let's shut the hell up and fantasy book this rumble. All right, man, so let's start things off with our United States Championship match. Logan Paul defends against Kevin Owens. I'm not a Logan Paul guy, huge Kevin Owens guy, so for me personally, I'm going to be very biased here. I, you know what? I'm going to break a rule of business. I'm going to be very biased. I'm going Kevin Owens stuns the world. I don't know if he'd be stunning the world, but he is stunning the hell out of Logan Paul, and he is defeating him, even though I don't think this is the way it's going to go, and that's another rule right there, man. This is not what I think is going to happen we are going to do our own predictions video for what I actually think will happen at the Rumble. But in this case, I would have Kevin Owens defeat Logan Paul, man. I mean, it's this is this is going to insult me personally if Logan Paul beats Kevin Owens. It's going to hurt me gravely, but I already fully expect Logan Paul to retain. But in my version of it, fantasy booking, I would have Kevin Owens stun the hell out of Logan Paul. Maybe get a rematch down the line. I don't really care. I, I just want to get this matchup out of the way. Kevin Owens dethrones Logan Paul. All right, man, next up, we're getting into the Women's Royal Rumble because I want to break down the Women's Royal Rumble before we get into the Fatal 4-Way and Men's because they kind of tie together and we'll get into all those things, man. So with this being said, we do have our Women's Royal Rumble. A little bit of the field announced. It's kind of crazy because I've always complained over the last few years that they always announce way too many damn members instead of letting it just be a surprise. So maybe that has something to do with Triple H or whatever, but I keep that shish up, Paul. We like that. We I, I want every damn entry to be a surprise outside of maybe three or four. You know what I mean? But nonetheless, and we already know that there's going to be a lot of just regular people coming out during the... It, not every single entrant is a surprise, as we know. Lots of, like, main roster or guys that are on the current roster right now are going to fill up the Royal Rumble very fast, but they will leave some room for some surprises, I hope. But nonetheless, man, here's my Women's Royal Rumble. I think this Rumble is going to really center on damage control and the whole story around that, and that is what I have eventually right here, man. So my final, my final five or six, if you will, is probably going to be as follows. Like, I think Liv Morgan's going to return or I would have her return. I, You know what I, who I'd also like to see return in the Rumble? I'd like to see Mandy Rose return, so maybe Triple H can make that happen, but Liv Morgan's not going to be here at the final. I don't think Shayna's going to be in the final, even though it wouldn't shock me. Nia Jax is not going to be in the final. Now, this is where it gets interesting because I think at some point, Asuka and Kyrie Sane are going to tag team together in the Rumble. And they're going to be on the apron. And I think I would have both of them eliminated by Bailey, Whether it be by accident. You know, she gets hit into both of them. But for the sake of the argument, I'm going to say that Bailey knocks them both out. But Dakota Kai is in the ring with Bailey, So this would be... They don't have to necessarily be eliminated leading to this final five right here. But I would have Bailey eliminate Asuka and Kyrie Sane. And that's going to tie into our storyline here. So here's our final five. We have Bianca Belair, Jade Cargill. I think she... I absolutely would have her in the Rumble setting up a Mania match, which we're going to get into into here. So this would be my final five. After Bailey eliminates Asuka and Kyrie Sane, Dakota Kai is like looking at Bailey like, holy shish, what did you just do? And Bailey's going to be like, I'm sorry, I had to do this. And then we're going to play out the final here. I would have Jade eliminate Bianca. This is easy money. I mean, this is not, not nothing too in-depth. Jade a eliminates Bianca setting up a Mania match. That's easy money right there. Bianca versus Jade is your WrestleMania match. I love Bianca Belair. I think that she's terrific. One of the best women's wrestlers on the planet. It. She needs a big time mania match. I don't think she's going to be surrounding any championship match this year because of these three women that we have in the ring right now. So this comes down to our final three. I think we're going to have some some sort of debacle where we're going to have Dakota Kai and Becky Lynch fighting it out. Maybe Bailey's resting or what have you. In a similar case where Dakota Kai is going to be in a very precarious situation and Bailey will eliminate Dakota Kai, taking business into her own hands and fighting it out one on one with Becky Lynch until she eventually wins. So Becky is your runner-up. Dakota gets eliminated by Bailey. 
And this obviously turns into a bunch of turmoil. Damage control is under fire. And this would eventually lead to our two women's championship matches at WrestleMania, where I would have Io, Bailey, and Dakota Kai for the women's title, Damage Control Triple Threat. You know, Asuka and Kairi Sane doing their own thing. And then our other side, we have Rhea Ripley. I know the championship isn't accurate. All right, I'm working on getting a custom one made. Versus Becky Lynch. You know, I think that's kind of the story they're trying to write there. Oh, not Rhea. Jesus in heaven. So we'd have Rhea Ripley doing war with Bianca. Um, um, what, do, what do we do? You get the point. Rhea Ripley versus Becky, and I'd have our damage control triple threat over here. All right, man, getting into the second to last match, we have the Fatal 4-Way Undisputed Championship matchup. Roman Reigns defends against Randy Orton, AJ Styles, and LA Knight. Particularly, this matchup doesn't really cause a huge fuss in my plan. I think that this matchup is going to be between all the other matches. So it'll probably go Women's Rumble, Kevin Owens versus Logan Paul. In my version, I would fantasy book that the Men's Royal Rumble would end the show. It'd be the main event. But this isn't too crazy. I would have Roman Reigns retain here. It really, in my version of this fantasy booking, it doesn't matter who he pins. It could be LA Knight, it could be Orton, it could be AJ Styles. Particularly, I guess he could pin Orton or Knight, even though, you know, Orton and AJ Styles are on this big return. In my version, personally, I would have him beat LA Knight. Have a great matchup, of course, but at the end of the night, it's not going to matter too much because LA Knight is taking this fall to Roman Reigns, and he is still going to be your champion at the end of the night. I know it's not the most exciting news of all time, but let's dive into the Royal Rumble, and maybe you guys can let me know what you think. And now we dive into the main event, man. What it is all about. The 30-man Royal Rumble match for a World Championship match at WrestleMania 40, man. I think there's only 11 entrants announced right now. We'll probably get somewhere up to like 15 or 16 before the actual matchup is announced. But, of course, I'm filming this on Wednesday night. And that is before Friday Night SmackDown, so I cannot tell you, you know, every single piece of lore. There's probably going to be some stuff that happens on the go-home show. However, man, let's get into my Royal Rumble. So I have a few personal notes. I'll show you guys my fan booking surprise entrance and then we'll get into like my final like moments and closing moments of the show that lead to everything happening later on. I also forgot to mention I would also have Kevin Owens defending the United States Championship in a big ladder match at WrestleMania after beating Logan Paul. So that's what I would do there. Maybe he could have another matchup at Elimination Chamber or not. Doesn't matter. Big ladder match at WrestleMania for the U.S. Championship. Nonetheless, I have a few side notes right here. So one of my things that happened that display throughout the Rumble, DIY is going to probably be in the Royal Rumble at some point, right? I would have them eliminate Judgment Day. There's going to be Judgment Day and DIY clash here inside my Royal Rumble, setting up an eventual championship match at Mania. So I'd have DIY and Judgment Day do war, and that would eliminate my Judgment Day, guys. I don't have Damian Priest really falling into my main event right now. I'm personally not a big fan of Damian Priest. Not that he's bad or something, he's just not my, you know, he's not my top of the line cup of tea. But another thing I would have is another one of these entrants, and he really doesn't even have to be in the Rumble itself, but I would have Jimmy Uso come out, and Jimmy would eliminate Jay. So Jimmy is going to eliminate Jay, and that will set up something eventually for them to. We're going to stay tuned to this because we're going to have to come back to it. But Jimmy eliminates Jay. Pull these guys in right here. Another surprise entrant in my Rumble would be Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar would return and he would also be in this Rumble. So just stay paused right here as we get into the rest of the lore. But Brock Lesnar is absolutely in my Rumble. Another pitch and I don't know, obviously, if he's cleared or not, but can you imagine, to imagine this, Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods are in the ring. Maybe they do, like, some cool tag team move sets and whatnot, and the buzzer goes off, and it is the return of Big E, man. Big E comes out, and he is a surprise entrant in the Royal Rumble, and it'd really be awesome if he didn't know about it. If, if Kofi and Xavier Woods were completely unaware of Big E returning, and the buzzer goes off, and Big E is in the Royal Rumble... Can you imagine the moment and just see the shocking reactions of Kofi and Xavier Woods during the Royal Rumble match? I believe that they would lose their minds, and it would be an epic moment for all the fans and everything. It'd be one of probably the better WWE moments of the year, possibly within the last decade, man. I think it would get a huge, insane pop, and Kofi and Xavier's reactions would be priceless. So if he's able to return, I'm just saying that he's fully cleared here. Fully clear, 100% healthy. I would have Big E return here, and we would get a New Day sort of come together there. And that may actually, that would probably lead to them getting some sort of tag team redemption. Maybe we can do like a tag team gauntlet or something. But my plan right now is for Judgment Day and DIY. So nonetheless, we get into the lore of the matchup right here, man. Let's take you guys into my closing moments here. So I think Karrion Cross eliminates Bobby Lashley. Jimmy Uso, he really didn't even need to be in the Rumble. He could just eliminate Jay, but I would imagine he would be in the Rumble. But he gets eliminated along the lines. 
Drew McIntyre also takes a fall. Shinsuke Nakamura also takes a fall. And those guys, I guess, could be in the Rumble match while all this is going. But my number 30 entrant in this year's Royal Rumble for me, fantasy booking this thing. But I also forgot to mention when I was talking about Jimmy, is I would, uh, I'd also have Solo in there. Solo would also be a part of this. But the last entrant in this thing is going to be... The Rock. Give or take, this is going to be your final six. It doesn't have to be this final six in the exact moments, but this is how I would have it. Brock Lesnar is going to eliminate Gunther, setting up their eventual clash. And when The Rock makes his entrance down to the ring, there's going to be a moment where Roman Reigns runs down to the ring and him and Solo try to eliminate The Rock. So they are trying to get The Rock out of there based on former comments. You know, Roman Reigns feels threatened. He is going, him and Solo Sokoa, their job is to eliminate The Rock. Maybe Jimmy's involved, maybe not. But they go to eliminate The Rock. The Rock moves and Cody Rhodes is caught in the crossfire and Cody Rhodes is eliminated from the Royal Rumble. Cody Rhodes is now shattered. He is completely shattered. He is on the outside. They're looking at him. You know, Shawn Michaels style. They're looking at him. He is beside himself. He cannot believe that he has been eliminated. Solo Sokoa and Roman Reigns thwart his efforts yet again. And Cody Rhodes loses his opportunity. Throughout the chaos, we are down to Rock and Punk. So this is strange, isn't it? But here's our final two. They're all the hoopla. The Rock finally eliminates CM Punk. And The Rock wins the 2024 Royal Rumble. Everyone up in arms. I know a lot of people are going to be pissed off about this. Cody Rhodes got thwarted. Punk's story gets thwarted. Everyone upset. We fast forward to the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. So The Rock has already secured his match at WrestleMania. But Roman Reigns still has to defend the championship inside the Elimination Chamber. Pick your poison. Randy Orton, LA Knight, AJ Styles, Bobby Lashley, Karrion Cross, Whoever the hell you want to put. Put it in the chamber with Roman Reigns over there. It really doesn't matter in this story. However, on our other side, you're going to have Punk... You're going to have Cody. You're going to have Drew. Move these guys over a little bit here. You're going to have Shinsuke. You're going to have Gunther. Damn, still can't fit all these guys on screen. And the last spot's not huge. I mean, it could be a few different people, but I'm going to say that it's Finn Balor. I'm going to say Finn Balor. I mean, pick your point. It doesn't really matter, man. Just, just, just listen. So the Rollins challenger spot is up for grabs in the Elimination Chamber, and then Roman Reigns defends in the Elimination Chamber. Roman Reigns will retain in the Elimination Chamber. And during this entrances for the other half of the Elimination Chamber matchup over here, man, during entrances, Cody Rhodes is the final entrant. Cody Rhodes will be the entrant number one into this Elimination Chamber match while making his entrance Jimmy Uso jumps Cody Rhodes, beats the hell out of him, and takes his spot, rendering him useless, and he is unable to compete. He takes him out completely, and Cody Rhodes is hindered, loses his spot in the chamber. Jimmy locks himself in the chamber, and the matchup starts. Cody Rhodes un unable to compete. Jimmy Uso stealing the spot. He doesn't want to go after Roman Reigns, so he's jumping ship and trying to make a run at Rollins' championship for WrestleMania. Doesn't want to go after Roman, so he's going to jump ship and take out Rollins, try to capture his own championship. So during this matchup, it get, the hoopla could continue. Does it really matter what goes on here? I would just maybe, maybe this could happen. Maybe these three guys are eliminated. Gunther could even be in there over Drew if you wanted to. But in the closing moments of this matchup over here, Jimmy Uso is in prime position, looking like he is about to take out Punk or Drew. Or maybe it's just Jimmy and Punk. Maybe it's down to Jimmy and Punk. You know what I'm saying now? It'd be down to Jimmy and Punk. Jimmy is in perfect position. He is about to take out CM Punk and go on to WrestleMania. His stealing the spot worked, and it looks like he is about to actually reap the benefits of taking out Cody Rhodes and jumping ship to Raw. Out of nowhere, like Shawn Michaels, Jey Uso comes up out of the floor, super kicking Jimmy, frog splashing Jimmy, GTS to Jimmy. One, two, three. Jay costs Jimmy setting up a WrestleMania matchup, Oos versus Oos. Just like Jimmy costs Jay in the Rumble, Jay costs Jimmy in the Chamber, and Punk wins the Elimination Chamber, setting up the matchup with Rollins at Mania. So here you go, you got Rollins and Punk, and then you have Rock and Roman. But the story's not over, Brad. So over the weeks from Elimination Chamber to WrestleMania, Cody Rhodes is like a man obsessed. He is unbelievably pissed off, can't believe it, he's beside himself, he's obsessed, he's causing havoc on Raw, he's causing havoc on SmackDown. Hell, he may even interrupt things on NXT or anything WWE related. Maybe spray paint some stuff. You know, just really gets the attention of WWE higher ups. And is like, you're going to put me in this matchup. And he will not take no for an answer until eventually Triple H will have a sit down with Cody Rhodes. 
on Monday Night Raw. Triple H eventually has a sit down with Cody, and he tells Cody if he can defeat Solo Sokoa, he will be added to the main event with Rock and Roman. After all of the hoopla, Cody Rhodes would defeat Solo, finally get his WrestleMania match, and you would have Rock, Roman, and Cody for your World Championship Undisputed Championship side, and then we have Rollins versus Punk on the other side. And that is my fantasy booking of the Royal Rumble 2024. I know it was a lot. I hope it was easy to follow. I tried my best, man, but hopefully you guys get everything that I was trying to do there. But Rock, Roman, and Cody for night two. Punk and Rollins for night one. Punk gets to main event mania finally. Cody finally finishes the story. And it kind of, I don't know. I like this, man. I like this plan. But at the end of the day, man, I would like to know what you guys think of all this down in the comment section below, of course. So please let me know all of your thoughts down in the comment section. I would greatly appreciate it, man. Nonetheless, man, I'm getting the hell out of here. Thank you guys so very much for watching. A huge shout out to our Patreon members of the MDT YouTube channel. Always appreciate all you fellas for everything you do for me on a monthly basis. But that is going to wrap it up, man. I'm getting out of here, man. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at MyDamnToys. I will see you guys next time. Have a blessed one, and I'll catch you later.